Any experienced motorcyclist can attest that controlling a motorcycle becomes automatic and instinctual. Years of practice set you up to be able to freely and safely ride your bike without expending too much brain power on what it is that you're actually doing. You just ride and flow and your instincts keep you safe and in control. That is why it is very important to develop good habits early on in your riding career. So without further ado, here are seven habits new riders must develop. The first habit every motorcyclist must develop is to always be aware of your surroundings, also known as riding as if you're invisible, also known as riding as if every car on the road might try to kill you. That is a bit of a broad statement, so let's break it down a little bit. If you're fresh out of your MSF course, you probably still have the echo of the expression, ride like you're invisible, bouncing around in your noggin. And if your MSF was anything like mine was, your instructor just said ride like you're invisible over and over and then had you waddling around on a motorcycle in a parking lot like a toddler with a diaper full of freshly metabolized peas and carrots. So what does riding like you're invisible mean? Cars are big, motorcycles are small. Car drivers are easily distracted by the carload of screaming goblins in the backseat, the digital gateway to the entire universe in their pocket, or the invasive thoughts of how truly unfulfilling their life actually is. So the last thing on their radar is the person on a motorcycle in their blind spot beside them. When you're on your motorcycle in traffic, you should assume you are always in someone's blind spot and that other cars on the road do not recognize your existence, just like your father on your fifth birthday when he was too busy betting all of your presents down at the dog track. And if these cars can't see you, you need to make sure you see them. All of them, not just the cars in your lane, but the cars crossing the intersection ahead of you or the cars about to merge onto the freeway. You can't assume that a car's smart features like blind spot detection will notice you because it seems most companies that manufacture automobile safety tech features had a brain fart and forgot that cars aren't the only vehicles on the road and didn't fine tune these sensors to always recognize motorcycles as well. I wanted to put this habit at the top as many other habits are extensions of this mentality. Another good habit to develop on your motorcycle is trying to always visualize multiple escape paths in case a car decides to kill you. Are you catching on yet? When you're riding on the road, it is good to think about where you will go in the instance that the normal path straight ahead of you becomes impassable. Like when the brakes go out on a fire truck and sends it plummeting full speed into the roadway a few car lengths ahead of you. Will you A, crash headfirst into it, B, jump over it in the empty car hauler that happens to be parked perfectly on the side of the road with its ramp down like you're in Grand Theft Auto, or C, speed up into the furthest lane and pass the intersection before the fire truck crashes through through. Jokes aside, an accident or unforeseen situation can arise at any moment while you're on your motorcycle and it is good to get into the habit of knowing where you can safely ride to evade a dangerous situation. This includes knowing the best lane position to be in, being aware of the speed of the cars around you, and detecting potential dangers before they become an emergency. Is there a Dodge Hellcat riding everyone's ass during rush hour where traffic can come to a screeching halt at any second? If you find yourself in a situation like this, make sure to see what possible path you can take if an emergency situation were to take place. On the same topic, it is a good idea to practice emergency braking in a safe space like a parking lot so you can determine how much pressure you'd be able to put on your brakes before they lock up, especially if your motorcycle did not come equipped with ABS. And the last tip relating to other people on the road is to make a habit of keeping yourself cool. Allowing yourself to get heated by other drivers acting egregiously is only going to put yourself further at risk. When you're in a state of heightened emotions, you are more likely to ride aggressively and potentially unsafely or beyond your means. Yeah, it can be incredibly frustrating that a car cuts you off, but just take a breath, think about how you can avoid that situation in the future, and move on. If you get angry, try to speed up and pass him, or are too distracted shouting and giving some artistic hand gestures, you're losing focus on what you're actually doing on the road. And when push comes to shove, if you put an angry car up against an angry motorcycle, that car is going to win every time. So don't even try. There is no sense in spending all this time practicing and learning how to be a good motorcyclist if the moment a car driver does annoying car driver crap, it all goes out the window because any new rider will quickly learn that there is no shortage of opportunities for car drivers to so show you how reckless, impatient, selfish, and straight up dumb that they are on the road. So if Karen pulls out in front of you on her Warner Bros edition Chevy minivan, give her the benefit of the doubt and assume she couldn't see past the 10 different family stick figure decals she has on her window. Because it is the responsibility of motorcyclists to do the seeing and thinking for everyone on the road, because car drivers just can't seem to be trusted to do so on their own. Now, guys, 
guys, we have a super special giveaway bike coming later this week. It is a truly legendary bike that I think you guys are gonna go bananas over. Can you guess what it is? Here's a hint. Other than the Triumph Daytona 675R, it was my dream bike before I started riding motorcycles almost 10 years ago. Maybe it's the namesake of the channel. Anyways, if you want to find out what our new modern classic giveaway is going to be, head over to yamanoob.co and become a member. Get 10% off on all purchases on our store, and you'll also get access to the Discord server where you can get behind the scenes looks on everything that's going on here at Yami Noob. If you want to find out what the next giveaway bike is, that's the way to do it. Head over to yamanoob.co, select one of our most popular bundles, and join up. Speaking of seeing, it's also important to stay looking ahead on a motorcycle. This is an essential habit for multiple reasons. Firstly, you need to be able to anticipate the road conditions. Is there traffic, an accident, a Dodge Hellcat tailgating every other car on the road? Wait, did I already make that joke? You need to be able to anticipate these situations by looking ahead. Secondly, and just as important, you need to look ahead when turning. This is also something you were hopefully taught in your MSF course, but it is super important when riding. If you aren't looking through a turn, you won't have a good read of the angle of the turn and be able to judge appropriate lean angle or speed, and you'll actually be fighting against your own subconscious. Your body and motorcycle will naturally follow in the direction that you are looking. So if you are looking through the turn, your body and motorcycle will be easier to guide through. Whereas if you're looking at the middle of the turn or at the edge of the road as you rapidly get closer and closer to the edge, worrying that you misjudge your entry speed, you are even more likely to ride right towards it. A common cause of crashing during a turn is target fixation. Like if you're in approaching a turn and you see a car waiting to enter the road after you pass and you look at this car instead of looking at the exit of the turn, you're more likely to turn wide and end up sliding off right into the road or possibly right into the object that you wanted to avoid in the first place. So when you're turning, look where you want to go. Keep your eyes on the exit and your body is going to be far more likely to steer the bike to the right place. The next habit that is important for noom riders is to be smooth and purposeful with the controls. Developing the proper finesse for motorcycle controls takes time, and that is why it is recommended that new riders begin on a beginner bike that is not too powerful, as choppy or misguided operation of the motorcycle controls on a powerful bike can lead to whiskey throttle where you yeet yourself into infinity. And you're not going to be able to fit into your furry costume for furry con if you're in a full body cast. This can be in reference to the relationship between your clutch and throttle. If you aren't smooth on either and haven't become well acquainted with fingering your bike's friction zone, you won't be able to smoothly direct power to the rear wheel. Too much throttle and then quickly releasing the clutch can cause you to wheelie or spin the back tire or lose track, which sure can be fun if it's done intentionally or safely, but it can really mess up your day if it happens when you're not expecting it or while the motorcycle isn't completely upright or in a straight line. You also want your shifting to be smooth, which requires the proper timing and manipulation of the clutch and throttle as you change up or down gears. You also need to learn how to be smooth on the brakes, especially in regards to emergency braking. You do not, I repeat, do not want to be going 65 miles per hour and have your front brake lock up because there's an old lady in a babushka shuffling across the road with her walker 20 years ahead of you. You'll want to learn to progressively add pressure to your brakes so you can stop safely and effectively. It's also imperative to ride the back brake during slow speed maneuvers. If you're really good at working the friction zone and riding the back brake, you can inch along so slowly you can practically track stand your motorcycle, which means you won't have to waddle your bike around parking lots like a total noob. It's a lot easier to be smooth on the throttle if you're not holding yourself up with all of your weight on your hands. This habit is pretty specific to sport bike riding, but that is holding yourself up with your legs by squeezing the tank. One of the earliest mods a lot of sport bike riders do is install tank grips on their motorcycle so they can easily grab onto the tank with their legs and keep their weight off their hands. Holding yourself in position by squeezing your tank makes it so much easier to have smooth control of your motorcycle. By keeping weight off your hands, you're able to make much smaller and purposeful movements. That way, if you run into some bumpy roads or ride your R6 on some single track, you won't be accidentally moving the throttle as you soak up the bumps with your arms. Similarly, it is a good habit to stop holding onto the throttle all ham-fisted like a Harley rider holds onto a beer bottle and instead hold onto it like you would hold a screwdriver. This allows for improved throttle articulation and less herky-jerky power delivery. And the last good habit to develop on a motorcycle is to familiarize yourself with the bike and how to tell if anything is amiss or out of the ordinary. This means regularly giving your bike a once-over to check the brakes, lights, tire pressure, and tire depth, and fluids. 
It is not uncommon for a lot of people to neglect their car until they're given a warning light or it outright just dies and they can coast it off to the side of the road or they call AAA and have it taken to a shop. Whereas if something goes seriously amiss on your motorcycle, you're a lot more likely to crash than if you have a car experiencing mechanical failures. So also become familiar with your bike and the way it sounds and be able to recognize you should probably pull over and check everything out instead of just turning up the radio to drown out the bad sounds like car drivers do. I think it's important to make new riders aware that it is far more important to maintain their motorcycles than they have previously done on a car. Because if something goes wrong on a bike like blowing out a tire on the freeway or having a sudden loss of power, you're far more likely to get hurt than if the same thing would happen in a car. Then you would have a motorcycle repair bill and a hospital bill. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to subscribe for more new rider insights. Fact. There are over 200 artificial languages that have been invented for books, television, and movies. Goodbye.